he was looking at me like he wanted to kill me. He said, go on, say something. He said, say something. I, I didn't look at him no more like the head of the mob or, or a killer. That was a bad boy. I first I met know. Donald Big D Garcia on a bus going into Donovan State Prison. This was my first time heading into a level four yard. I was a visitor and so was he at the time. But Donald had taken similar rides for over 31 years. The big difference for him was that this time he was not in shackles. I interviewed Donald for Risen Magazine a few years later where legendary LA photographer Estevan Oriel snapped the photos. Later, Donald appeared in a documentary I directed, Dope, Death or Prison Eventually. He was living a quiet life with his wife and two pit bulls in San Fernando Valley, working in gang prevention for the city of Los Angeles. In this rare footage from the movie Dope, Big D mentions his involvement in helping found La M, the Mexican Mafia. We started a little prison gang, right? We came up with the name Mexican Mafia. His hand bore the original Mexican Mafia mark until the day he died in June of 2012. Tell me about your association with uh, Donald Garcia. Yeah, I met Donald at Chaffee College, and we were both on a panel. And Donald was there with some other guys, and I was there with a, a Christian guy. Donald's a Christian, don't get me wrong. But Donald was right there saying how he's doing all this gang work. I, I done all, a lot of gang work in my life. And he would say he gets the guy, he puts him in by the, and so when it came to me, you know, like, he was looking at me like he wanted to kill me. He said, go on, say something. He said, say something. And I said, you know, when two of us go to somebody's, one guy's talking and the other guy's praying. After that day, me and Donald became friends. You know, when Donald was going to pass, he had some of his closest friends call me. And after I got the third call, I said, I'm on my way. I called a friend of mine, meet me here. I'm, we're gonna go to Big D's house and pray for him. And I remember I went in there and his stomach was just sticking out. I've seen that before, because in prison I was a hospice. And when the guys were dying, their, their, their bellies would just get out there. And his was out there, and I say, I was again, I'm looking at him, all these guys that are there, and they're looking at me, you know, like, who's this tramp came in here, right? They were, you could tell they were crum at one time criminals. And they're looking at me, I'm in a t shirt, I'm Levi's or shorts, you know, I'm not, a, I don't get all dressed up, I go do what God will have me do. And I went there, and he said, Oh, wow, man, I'm glad you made it. I'm in pain, and they said, are you taking anything? And he looked me right in the eye, big D looked me. He said, I don't want to take no pills. I don't want to lose my victory because I'm loaded, because I'm dying. I accept the pain. In Jesus' name, I accept the pain. And I prayed for Donald, I prayed for him. And then I left, me and my friend left. But. Every time I would see him or I would call him, it was always a good, good, genuine thing. I, we used to go together with uh, Bill Glass Ministries into the prison. And one day Donald came, he was sharp. That guy was always sharp. Spit, shine, shoes, every crease perfect. And I see him walking in and he said, it was a three day event. And I see him, so I went over there, got his shoes, got, his clothes and he was carrying his bag. He goes, what are you doing now? I said, man, I'm helping you to get this to your room. So we put it up there in his room and man, he just sets everything perfect. And he goes, you know, Al, he says, 
I'm so grateful what God has done for me. And I, I didn't look at him no more like the head of the mob or, or a killer. I was a bad boy. Right? I didn't look at him like that. I looked at him that he just taught me something. He just taught me to always be humble. Always remember what you were, not who you are, but who you were. You know, Kilroy, the same thing. I know Kilroy's mom, his brother. His brother was my crime partner for a while. He was a wonderful guy, wonderful. And his mom, I love Rose. Man, I'll be all going over there sick. And after we shoot up, she'd make me something to eat every time. Oh, would you like some arroz con leche? Yeah, Rose, and she put a lot of sugar. She knew I was a hype. And I, I loved her. And Roy, we became so close that, you know, we'd call it brother. How you doing, brother? You know, it was, those are men of God that never forgot who they were, but not who they are. They never forgot. They always helped the poor. Always. Always. I would see guys, and they would just walk away, and the guy was talking. And I would say, hey, man, why are you so rude? He said, that guy's just lying. I don't want to hear that now. And did, they would walk away laughing. And they, you have to know one thing. God, he's worried. He's worried because he's sending people like me and them out. He had to move the trash can to find me. I became friends with Big Alice Savas after contacting him on Facebook. Through that medium, Al agreed to be interviewed for the book that launched this YouTube channel, God and Gangsters. Donald and Al were always polite to me, my family, and my friends. While I never had reason to fear them, I couldn't forget the power they once wielded or that they had once been closer associates to death than with life. They were among the few who had sparked the great wildfires that became the Mexican Mafia and the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Most people remain fascinated with the war stories of the days when Al and Donald helped run the streets. Neither Garcia nor Acevas consider this the pinnacle of their lives, however. They never dreamed that a life governed by prayer could be more meaningful and exciting than anything those mean streets had to offer. Subscribe to God and Gangsters by pressing the subscription button. Passing this video on to someone at risk could save a life. Thanks and blessings.